Dear students, today we are going to study some of the writings of a famous scientist, Albert Einstein. During various occasions, Einstein had spoken and written, and these have been collected in a volume called Ideas and Opinions. We have completed Einstein's writing on the world as I see it, and we have also completed his opinions on freedom. We saw that Einstein has very progressive ideas on general topics. He encourages intellectual freedom. He talks about the aim of existence and also about various political systems. Today we are going to talk about Einstein's society and personality. As the title itself suggests, there are two different ideas in this part. Society, Einstein speaks about groups of human beings, groups of people and personality. He also speaks about exceptional individuals. The gist of this entire essay is that society is dependent on exceptional individuals, but exceptional individuals are also shaped by society. This essay begins with the words of Einstein that society and individuals have a dependent relationship. He says that this relationship of mutual dependence can be seen in the three basic necessities of life, food, clothing and shelter. The example he gives is like this. He says that the food which we eat is not manufactured by us. It has to be grown by the farmer. The clothes we wear are not made by us. They have to be made by somebody else. And the houses we live in are not built by us. Somebody builds the houses and we live in them. So there is dependence on others. Human beings are called as social animals because they live in a society. They cannot live alone. He says not only our external requirements like food, clothing and shelter, but even our thoughts and beliefs are given to us by others. We learn our thoughts and beliefs when we talk to others, when we get educated, etc. And these are communicated to us through language. But language also is not invented by us. Einstein says that even for language, we are dependent on others. An individual is great, according to him, because he belongs to a group of people whom we call as the human society. Society supports an individual from life to death in all aspects, physical, intellectual and spiritual. He says, therefore, we judge a person by his social skills. A person who is concerned about society, who works for the welfare of society, who thinks about social good, such a person is considered as virtuous. A person who has no social concern, a person who does not contribute anything to society, who is indifferent, such a person is considered to be bad. Einstein, of course, says that this is not a very good way of judging a person because our social concern is important. Equally important is the need of exceptional individuals to society. He says society cannot progress unless there are some exceptional individuals. All great social achievements were the contributions of great people. They were not the contributions of society as a group. He gives three examples here. He says, fire was discovered by a person. The growing of crops as food was also discovered by an individual. Similarly, the steam engine was discovered by an individual. 
Therefore, for all important steps which society has taken, the exceptional individual has take, played an important part. Einstein expresses this by saying that society nurtures an individual, but it is this individual who in turn is responsible for the evolution of society. Now let us talk about how Einstein discusses the need for exceptional individuals. He has told us that individuals are nurtured by society. Now he says that exceptional individuals are those people who are capable of thinking because they are capable of generating ideas. Ideas have great power in society. These ideas should be generated to the maximum level in order that society is nurtured, that society goes forward. He says that the sign of a healthy society is to give freedom to thinkers. Creative individuals require freedom. Remember that this is what we discussed in the essay on freedom. There also Einstein gave a lot of importance to intellectual freedom. Once more, Einstein speaks about the need for a society which encourages exceptional individuals to think freely. The example he gives here is of the Italian Renaissance. He says that the dark middle ages, the medieval times came to an end because exceptional individuals brought in the reawakening of the Italian Renaissance. He says that the continuity of civilization from Greece to Europe to America is the result of this great renaissance or reawakening. Therefore, it is very important for us to encourage exceptional thinkers. Now, before I continue, I would like you to give some examples of exceptional thinkers who have benefited society. Gopi, can you tell me the name of one such person? Alexander Graham Bell has invented the telephone. Of course, today life seems to be impossible without a telephone. That is good. Now, Deepika, can you give an example? Valmiki wrote the Ramayana and our culture is based on this great epic. Buddha, Christ and Muhammad have preached many marvelous religious tenets which changed the lives of people and have given rise to a new religions. They have benefited society immensely. Very good. And all these individuals are the products of their society. So you can see that Einstein's ideas are very relevant. They are also very legitimate because he says that exceptional individuals help society and society helps exceptional individuals. We can describe this as a symbiotic relationship where both parties benefit from each other. Now, Einstein continues to talk about the mutual dependence of society and the individual. Here he mentions his contemporary times. Einstein is analyzing the 20th century. He says, the society and the people are both at a crisis point. Society is not progressing as it should. And exceptional individuals are not generating ideas as they should. Einstein finds one problem which may be the cause of this. He says that there is an unprecedented increase of population. The population of Europe, he says, has increased three times in 100 years. 
From this fact, we may conclude that even exceptional individuals would be three times more than before. Einstein expresses his regret. He says this has not happened. The increase in population has decreased the number of exceptional individuals. Great people don't seem to be born at all today. Science and technology, arts, creativity, all these are in real crisis. He says that instead of individual scientists, the organization has replaced great individuals. Even in the field of arts, the same is the case. Great artists are rarely to be found today. In the field of painting and music, he says, there are no exceptional individuals at all. In spite of being such a great scientist, Einstein was very artistically oriented. Remember that you all mentioned he learnt music from childhood. He also loved all other art forms. Here he is expressing his opinion by saying that unless great creative artists are there, society does not progress because these creative individuals bring about new value systems. They bring about a new ideology for common people to follow. When society has to change itself, it has to better itself, it has to make itself more progressive, the ideas of exceptional individuals are needed. If there are no exceptional individuals, then no such ideas are generated. So he says that in a democracy especially, common people need an ideal. Common people have to participate in democracy, so they have to have high values. Individuals give them high values. A dictatorial government which suppresses common people cannot give these ideas. Einstein speaks about the need for exceptional people to give the right direction to democracy. He says that even in a democracy where we require exceptional leaders, we have nobody today. The common person has to participate in democracy. Therefore, we require some exceptional individuals to give them direction. Society should encourage these exceptional individuals. Society should make them come out. So, society is dependent on personality. Remember the title is Society and Personality. Einstein spoke first about society, how individuals are nurtured by society. He said that human beings who grow up alone, away from society, are uncivilized. For civilizing a human being, you need the influence of society. Now he says that for the betterment of society, you need the personality. The personality is the exceptional individual. Now, Einstein moves on in the next part of the essay to the future of humanity. He says that self-respect and willingness to give up the ego, these are requirements of a good personality. Remember today we are talking about personality development. See how wonderfully progressive are the ideas of Einstein which at a time when nobody was speaking about personality development. Einstein is mentioning these ideas. He says that people who are like machines, people who do not think, people who are mindless, such people are useless for a society. Therefore, for the future of humanity, we require people who can think. We require people who can think about important issues and give their ideas. Again, he gives the example which he has given earlier and that is military service. He says that military service makes people mechanical. We should resist it. We should not give in to military service. 
because if we keep having wars in the world, many people are predicting that sooner or later the world will come to an end. The world has already fought two world wars. Now we all say that if a third world war comes, the world will not survive because everybody has nuclear weapons, chemical weapons, biological weapons, the world cannot survive. This is a very pessimistic view. Einstein uses this word pessimistic, negative, a view which looks only at the darker side of life. About the future of humanity, Einstein himself does not have such a pessimistic view. He says that he is very hopeful of a bright future for humanity. He says, let us not rule out that humanity has a bright future. For this he lays a condition. He says that let us keep a society, let us keep in place a society which can generate great individuals and great ideas. This society will be one which will give freedom to individuals to carry out their inner pursuits. It will recognize creativity as a very high level of intellectual development. He says that another requirement is there. Although technology has made our life easy and it has given us a lot of leisure, a lot of free time, we are not using the free time. As one of you mentioned, we are not using the free time properly. Therefore, if we do a little bit of proper planning, remember today we learn planning and goal setting as very important skills. Einstein is saying this half a century back that we require planning. The area in which he wants planning is division of labor. He says the same people are doing the same things. We do not need everybody to do everything. We should have correct division of labor. Once we do planning, once we encourage creativity, then society will improve. Einstein ends this essay with a very interesting analogy. We can call it as a figurative use. He says that in future, historians will look at his generation as though it is the childhood of humanity. After all, human civilization is only a few thousand years old. The world is millions of years old. So now the human civilization is like a small child, a child who is always making mistakes, who is always quarreling, who is always afflicted by illness. So Einstein says, in future, maybe one million years later, historians will look at the world and they will say that during the 20th century, there were so many problems in society because these were the small illnesses which come to a child inevitably. But this does not mean that society will come to an end. This does not mean that human civilization will become extinct. Now we shall take up some language development activity. Here our language development activity is divided into two parts and the first of the parts is pronunciation. You must remember that if you want to communicate well in English, your pronunciation is most important. Based on the lessons we have done on Einstein, remember that by using that language, we can improve our pronunciation. First, let me tell you that a single letter in English, like letter A, can be pronounced in different ways. 
first I will give you the pronunciation of the letter A in different ways in the words taken from this essay. Look at the word attitude. In attitude, the letter A is pronounced as A. Then we have the word art. In art, the same letter A is not pronounced as A, but it is pronounced as A. We are writing the same letter, but we are not pronouncing it alike. Similarly, in a word like achieve, we write achieve with letter A, but we pronounce that A as a, achieve, a sound is there. Then we have another word, all. Here we write letter A, but we pronounce as a. And then we have the word state. State also uses letter A, but it uses the sound A. The pronunciation is state, eight. Now, I would like you to give one example of each of these sounds. First word I pronounced is attitude. Can you give an example, Karthik? Attitude, value. Deepika? Art, ar. Gopi? State, able. Vidarshana? All, call. Karthik? Achieve, moral. Good. If you learn the various ways in which the vowel sounds A, E, I, O, U are pronounced in 20 different ways, you will improve your communication skill. Look at the lesson again and try to pronounce as many words as you can using all these forms. Now I will tell you about another rule of pronunciation. This is called as stress or accent. In words of more than one syllable, in English, one of the syllables is pronounced with more stress. Sometimes a word which is spelt exactly alike shows its function in a sentence by altering the pattern of stress. Let me give you an example of a word O B J E C T. This word can be used as a noun and as a word. When we use it as a noun, we pronounce with the stress on the first syllable as object. Object stresses on the first syllable. Suppose we pronounce it as a verb, the stress shifts to the second syllable. Then we say object. Object stress is on the second syllable. Now, I would like you to make a sentence using O, B, J, E, C, T, both as a noun and a verb. Can you do it, Vidarshana? I object to the presence of this object in my room. That's very good. Now, can you give Deepika an example of another word which is like object and object? which follows the same accent pattern when it is used as a noun and as a verb. P R O J E C T. This is project. For noun we say project whereas for verb we say project. Very good. Now let us learn another rule and that is the adding of suffixes. When we add a suffix to a word the pattern of accent changes. Let me give you some examples. The word civilize is pronounced with stress on the first and the third syllables. When we make it into a noun, it's pronounced as civilization, stress on the syllable z. Then we have the word create, second syllable stress. When it becomes creativity, the stress shifts to t. Similarly, prepare, second syllable stress, shifts to the third syllable, preparation. Pronounce, second syllable stress, 
becomes pronunciation. Pronunciation stress shifts to the A syllable. These are some of the important techniques of pronouncing English. It is not enough to do one or two words. You must constantly improve your pronunciation by following these rules. As you go along, you will learn many more rules of pronunciation. Now, before we end this lesson, we are going to do one more exercise of language development. Again, it is vocabulary. Remember, we have done a vocabulary exercise earlier too. This time, we are going to take up synonyms and antonyms. A synonym is a word which has a similar meaning to another word. An antonym is a word with an opposite meaning. When you know many synonyms for a word, you are able to express yourself better. So, if you want to speak English well, if you want your communication skills to improve, you must learn as many synonyms for each word as possible. Let me ask you some synonyms. Let me see if you can give me some synonyms for the words which I suggest. Gopi, can you tell me the synonym for the word progress? Improvement, development. Correct. Now, Karthik, can you give me two synonyms for brilliant? Bright, intelligent. That is right. Now, Vidarshana, I would like two synonyms for creative. Artistic, original. Good. Deepika, tell me two synonyms for attitude. Outlook and approach. Very good. Now, let us do antonyms. As I already told you, Antonyms are words with opposite meaning. Sometimes antonyms are not any way similar to the original word. For example, the antonym of health is disease. So it's a totally new word. That is one way of finding an antonym. The other way of finding an antonym is by addition of a prefix. You add a small part in front of the word like moral antonym is immoral. You are adding a prefix I am. Now, I would again ask you for the antonyms of some words. Be active and give me the antonyms. Gopi, it is your turn first. Tell me the antonym of freedom. Bondage. Good. Now, Karthik, you must tell me the antonym of true. False. Vidarshana, can you tell me the antonym of empty? Full. That's very good. So, you notice all these words, there was only a different word for the antonym, not a prefixing. Now, I will give you one word where you need to add a prefix. Deepika, can you tell me the antonym of possible? Impossible. Good. Now, Gopi, tell me the antonym of lead. Mislead. Good. We have studied the content in great detail. We have understood Einstein's ideas and we have also shared our own ideas. We have allowed Einstein's ideas to influence us and also make us into original thinkers.